This is a great example of an SAT math question that sounds much, much harder than it actually is. So the first thing I'd want to do is draw a picture and let me kind of show you how I would do that because that might be a little weird, but if you understand how trigonometry works, you'll see. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF where angle A corresponds to angle D and angle C corresponds to angle F. Angle C and F are right angles. So I'm going to draw a triangle, but I'm only going to draw one because I know I don't actually care about the distance of, distances on these triangles, right? The, the lengths of any of these sides. I, I'm always talking about things in a kind of relationship, in a fractional ratio, right? So the, I don't actually know any distances. So just kind of overlapping the triangles and kind of pretending they're the same is actually safest because then when they're asking me to move between the triangles, it's much more intuitive. So they do say that C and F are the right angles. So I'm going to label the right angle as both C and F. And they say that angle A corresponds to angle D. It does not matter which corner I choose here, but I'm going to just choose A to be at the top because that just feels right. And that leaves us with B and E here. So again, technically, there's two triangles. But I'm going to treat them as one because I can see that we're moving from one to the other. And since they're similar and since similar triangles have equal angles, the sides are, are maybe different sizes, but the angles are always consistent. I want to understand where I am in each triangle. And if I literally just make it one triangle and overlap them, then it's much less likely that I get confused and think about the wrong angle. So they do tell me that the tangent of angle A, which would be the same as the tangent of angle D, uh, is 50 over 7. So let's just remind ourselves, so Katoa, you might want to write that on your page because so many people just mess this up, what the sine, cosine, and tangent stand for. So tangent is what we're interested in. The tangent of A is going to be equal to the opposite of A over the adjacent side. And so that's 50 over 7. So if we're focused here, the opposite is going to be across. So that's the 50. And then the adjacent side is right here. We don't know the hypotenuse. We could find it, but let's see if we need to. The next thing we're being asked for is the uh, value of tangent of E. So notice the E is not the same as what we were given before. The E is now over here, but tangent hasn't changed. Tangent of E is still going to be opposite over adjacent. The difference, though, is now the opposite side is a different side, right? So this is very important for trigonometry. It's very um, based, very much based on position. And so if we change the position, we change what is the opposite and what is the adjacent side. If we're standing on a different corner of this triangle, there's a different side opposite. So that's why this is going to shift. Where now seven, which was the adjacent side before, is now the opposite side because we're at a different spot, we're at a different angle. So uh, that means that also the adjacent side is flipped, now adjacent to uh, angle E or angle B, depending on how you want to think about it, is the 50. So no reason to get the hypotenuse and no reason to reduce this fraction, right? Seven over 50 is a perfectly valid answer. But if you wanted to put it as a decimal or for some reason you did some more complicated thing, we could do seven over 50, which is uh, 0.14, exactly. So you can put that in as well. Um, so the key here for me was that rather than think about two triangles and try to make the like move from one to the other, I, I know that this 50 here, it, it's not necessarily the length of side CB or side FE of the triangle. It might be, but the point of having trigonometry is that as these triangles expand and contract, get bigger and smaller, even though the size, the distance is changing, the relationship is not changing. And that's what makes them similar triangles. That's what makes it work, whether we have a big triangle or a small triangle, that the tangent of an angle, the sine of an angle is always going to be consistent. If that angle is consistent, which by definition is what similar triangles have, then the relationship between the sides in that right triangle are also going to be consistent. So it could be the case that this side 50 is actually 100. Right, so just to kind of give you an example, it could be the case that this is actually on the uh, CB triangle 100, and the 50 corresponds to the FE triangle. In that case, though, then the AC side would be 14. And so it, it's bigger, but it's still the same relationship, because then if I were to do tan A, the opposite side is actually 100, the adjacent side is actually 14, but 100 divided by 14 is the same as 50 divided by 7. They are the same relationship. And that's what trigonometry really comes down to, is we're always thinking in terms of fractions because we can reduce 
or unreduce that fraction, no matter how big or small the triangle gets, but the overall relationship, the overall fraction is always the same. This is just fundamentally why trigonometry works at all. So if you understood that, this might not be that hard of a question. In fact, some people are going to recognize that if you just move from one acute angle of a right triangle to the other, all you have to do is flip the tangent upside down. So 50 over seven becomes seven over 50, which is what we did here. But I like to see it because I wanna be safe that maybe I'm you know, making sure I, I'm, I'm thinking of it right and not falling for some trap. But I do not think it takes as much time to draw this picture, have the two triangles kind of overlapping on the same picture, and then just see it for ourselves.